Hello everybody, so in this video I'm going to show you just some ways that you can try to protect yourself as far as whenever you're sharing your photos, maybe in a portfolio online, or as far as, you know, anything that somebody might download it and just use it without your permission. Again, really big things for you to just be aware of from a broad umbrella standpoint is you do have copyright and then you have the public domain. Really for the public domain and creative commons, such as websites like Pixabay, photographers, designers, we make the choice that we are going to put our creative content into these areas for other people to utilize. Um, some of us do subscribe to that mindset that, you know, share and share alike. However, it's okay if you're like, I don't want to just share my work. I want to get, you know, some type of income based off of my work. So yeah, you can copyright your work and then people would pay for uses of your photography or your graphics or whatever art piece you're working with, your music, etc. However, it's probably the trickiest as far as photography goes because on the one hand, you have to show like your portfolio pieces, but on the other hand, you don't want people to just on the internet right click, save image as, and download your graphic. So a couple of things, I wanted to start out in GIMP and kind of talk about this a little bit, like some things that you can do to try to protect yourself. Um, one of the first is as far as whenever you are working with an image, if you go up to the menu bar and choose image, there is something called metadata. Metadata is embedded into an image as far as uh, information is concerned and also to uh, any previous information. So like to start off here, I'm going to view the metadata. Again, I've used the walnut picture from uh, previous examples. So let's check out its metadata. and. It might be a little hard to see here, but it talks about the image size, the length, uh, not a lot of identifiable information. So if we go under image and let's go to edit metadata. And just so you know, the, the odds are good we didn't see a lot in there was because yes, this came from Pixabay. Uh, the photographer did have their information on Pixabay, but it was meant to be in the Creative Commons to begin with. So normally like in that realm, we aren't that concerned about metadata. But here now you can see, again, that was under image, metadata, edit metadata. I can actually come in and change as far as the description is concerned. I can change as far as contact information and what websites, uh, also what type of intellectual genre. So like, for example here, like let's go to description. Uh, let's call this, uh, I don't know, Walnuts. We'll say the author is Dr. D, uh, author title, uh, associate professor, close up of, Walnuts with vibrant coloring. But this is what I wanted to show you here, especially when it comes to GIMP, is you do have different types of statuses here. So copyright status unknown, that's a default. That can be, in my experience, that can be a little bit dangerous because of the fact that you're kind of, you know, it's a gray area. I really encourage all of my students, like make a decision, choose whether or not you want something to be copyrighted or public domain. Now, because this came from Pixabay, public domain. And then as far as copyright notice or copyright URL, what we can actually do is if I go to, I think it's copyright.gov, And there we go. You can actually come in here and you can learn more, but also as well, register your work. So for instance, if you were to register your work, you would be able to link to the electric registration of your copyright. That's one of the beauties, especially for those of us in the United States, uh, pretty much the mentality is, is the moment you put 
pen to paper and you create an idea, that idea is your idea. And no, the government, to emphasize, because I get this a lot from students, the government does not care if you are a student or not. It is your work. You own it. So that's just something that you might want to take a look at. Uh, from what I recall too, it's been a little bit of time here, but uh, I do not think actually as far as, so for instance here you have, you know, artwork, architecture, photographs. This is probably the big one for us as far as works commonly registered in here. So personal photos, uh, wedding photos, sports photos, school photos, uh, event photos, etc. So this could be a way that you could register uh, all of your work as far as your photography is concerned. But it's also one of those things too that, yes, if you want, let me come back into GIMP here. Uh, if you want, and let me bring up the metadata, there we go. If you want to have something copyrighted, it is a fine line of actually copywriting versus because you took the photo, therefore it is yours. So I'm just gonna say public domain. And then outside of that, I don't have anything to import, so I'm gonna go ahead and write the metadata on the photograph. And now that becomes embedded in the photograph, like if I go ahead and do maybe export as, and I'll export this to my desktop so we can see it easier here. And what I'll do is I'll add CC onto this for copyright. And let's go ahead and export. Okay, so now I'll go ahead and go to my desktop real quick. Can't really tell a difference here as far as the overall image is concerned. Uh, even whenever you're looking here, as far as the photo goes, notice I still have those options. However, like if I go under properties now, So if I go ahead here and right click now and go under properties, if I go under the details, notice now under origins, it's actually telling me, you know, what is the title? Who is the author? Where did this come from? Etc. So all of these elements here are being recorded for me from that metadata that I input here. So that's one way that you can try and protect your photographs is using that metadata option there. Photoshop also has the same option as well. One other way that I'd like to talk about to tie together in here is more of a visual way. And honestly, this is, in my opinion, this is extremely old school, but it still has its place and it can still make it a little bit difficult, especially in your own portfolios. This is using the text tool. And what I'm going to do is normally I go under fonts here in GIMP and I'm going to try to choose a semi thick font that has a lot of serifs and is just really difficult as far as making things to kind of like this mature script may actually work here. So let's try this. Uh, And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to like 72. Okay, there we go. And then maybe do an enter. All right, so I'm going to go ahead here and grab my move tool and kind of position this like in the middle. What I'm going to actually do here is I'm going to do some overlay effects to make it so that the text is kind of embedded into the image. Like it doesn't truly take away from the image, but somebody who downloads my graphic, they're gonna have to work pretty hard to kind of clean up and heel brush what I've done to the graphic here. So before I can do that, over in my layers panel, 
If I right click on this text layer where it says the copyright, what we're actually going to do is we're just going to completely discard the text information. There's a whole thing on this as far as graphic design. This is making it pretty much into a raster graphic for us, which means now in this panel here where I'm working down here, I can click on this drop down next to mode and I can work through and pick some of these as far as changing how this is going to look here. So if I come through now and I'm actually using just my scroll, my middle mouse wheel here, but you see how it's starting to change this a little bit. Like that's actually a really good one. What did I end up on? Soft light. So I can come in here and kind of just begin to kind of place this one on top of the other here. A few points if you're going to use this method, I would try to cover the image. I would, however, stay away from like corner graphics. It's too easy to just go in and crop it out and just be like, well, I'm going to work with the image in a different file size. Normally, I, if I'm going to use this route, kind of do it, you know, in the middle somewhere more difficult for anybody who wants to take my image to get rid of it. So this is, again, really old school way, but it can be a good line of defense for digital portfolios so that you can at least protect your work. Um, at this point, I would normally advise that, yes, you're going to have a printout of the photograph, normally on either you know your glossy or glossless paper, and you're actually going to be taking that as far as having a physical binder to an interview process. So really, a lot of us aren't going to think twice about seeing you know that you have you know copyright or protect it or property of so and so on your graphics online. So hopefully this gives you some food for thought as far as for those of you working with GIMP and preparing to protect your images as far as working digitally and presenting your photography online.